really good practice today. Um, you know, kind of change the script up a little on the guys, um, you know, a little sudden change in the middle of practice. Uh, we got to, some really good individual, a couple situations there early, you know, continue to work on our special teams, uh, you know, fundamentals, but about halfway through practice, uh, made the transition, uh, you know, into Doe Campbell and uh, you know, got a chance to work a little goal line situation. Uh, you know, really uh, pleased with the, the, the competitive spirit of our guys. Uh, you know, there was some, there was a great sense of urgency and intensity in every round and uh, went back and forth. Uh, you know, then I was able to get some overtime work, uh, you know, really focusing on the red zone and uh, you know, even some two point situations. So uh, I thought all in all, it was really good and competitive day from, from our team. Uh, you know, they're, they're embracing the physical nature of, of what we're asking uh, you know, of them and just trying to make the most of each day. Um, I thought this week, you know, was going to be you, know, you get you get a few weeks into spring ball and you get an opportunity to kind of you know, evaluate the identity of what you're trying to form and what you're trying to be. And you know, we're no by no means uh, you know, a finished product, but I see the proper steps that are going in, that are going into how we work and going into how we are trying to respond to good and bad situations. And uh, you know, this team is is definitely getting closer. It's uh, it's embracing the. Work that is required, and uh, you know, I think you know, you know the, the improvements are showing up across the board, and you know, there's a lot of competition here that um, it's going to continue uh, you know, through the end of next week and uh, our spring game. But uh, it'd be good for the guys to get a couple of days off. I mean, it's you know, we'll be going after you know really uh, you know you're really good throughout this uh, this spring practice. So we will get um, you know up the next six days. You will have meetings. We'll have meetings coming back Monday and then you're back on the practice field Tuesday to wrap up uh, you know, uh, spring practice here that following week, but uh, or this, this following week. But uh, I like where we are. It was a good day. First question will be Corey Clark. Hey, Mike, how are you, buddy? I'm doing well, Corey. How are you? Good. Um, I'm going to be taking the role of Ira. So I might be asking you a few questions uh, today. I want you talked about the competitive spirit. Is that something that you just couldn't figure out about your team last year because you just didn't have a month of March to figure out what you had and if they could, not only what you had, but if they could rise up the competitive spirit that you want out of a program. Yeah, you know, the competitive spirit, it's, uh, it has to be consistent. You know, anybody can have a competitive, uh, competitive moment, um, but when it's truly to the core of who you are, I mean, it's got to be in good times and in bad. Uh, you know, that's, that's the thing that we missed out on a year ago was the, the chance to create adversity, the, the chance to, to push guys to, to the brink um, to see how they were going to respond in, in uncomfortable situations. And, um, you know, when we got back in fall camp after just a, a really unique uh, you know, summer program where, you know, there was guy you never rarely had a full squad to even practice, you know, you know, going through fall camp. And so there were some, some situations that we just didn't feel – uh, you know, comfortable with putting our guys in just with the, the preparation of, of leading up to it. But, you know, now I mean, we're a year into it. They, they know what to expect. Um, you know, we, we faced a lot of adversity last year and there was, a, there was growth throughout the, throughout the season, uh, but there was no, I mean, there was no sugar coating that coming into, coming into January. And, you know, guys knew that, you know, spring practice, this is an opportunity to truly show and, and, uh, you know, define what that identity is going to be, but it has to be consistent. And, you know, as, as we sit there, you know, if it's 70 degrees and sunny and everything feels good, then, you know, any, anyone can have a, a, a great attitude and, and a competitive approach. You know, when you're in the 11th practice and your body's sore, and, you know, things are maybe going your way or not going your way, the, the response, you know, if, if you have that same competitive drive in your response and, and focusing on, on the, the details, focusing on, on, on the passion and the finish, you know, that's where you have a chance to really establish yourself. And so that's what I've been looking for. Um, and I've been pleased. I mean, this, this was an important week for us. Today was an important practice. Uh, I was pleased with, with how we responded there Monday. And uh, I thought today, uh, you know, from a physicality uh, you know, aspect, I mean, it was, it was good. All right, that's good. Brent Snow. Hi, hey Mike. When you mentioned competitiveness, I guess who are guys who are consistently kind of rising to the occasion and, and meeting that competitiveness, physicality, those kind of things uh, consistently right now? I mean, you know, I mean there's, there's a, quite a few guys. I mean, I think you know, Jermaine Johnson, I mean, I love his spirit. Uh, I love his, the, the way that he comes to work, whether it's 
an individual drill or, you know, regardless of situation and practice, he's, he's competing to win. And, and, you know, he's in, embracing, you know, challenges and coaching him and, uh, you know, trying to you know, even force him uncom- to be uncomfortable in, in, in times. But, uh, you know, I think he's got a great, uh, you know, great mindset approach to his team. And that's where, you know, when you see that and you see a guy that's trying to make others better, um, you know, with that attitude, it's, uh, you know, it's impressive. You know, really, really pleased with our running back group. Uh, you know, our offensive line, you know, we've got some guys that are offensive defensive line. You know, Fabian love it. And I know I've mentioned Fabian, you know, a few times, but, you know, I think I've seen him take the next step, um, you know, in his, in his approach and, and you know, expecting big things out of him. You know, Dennis Briggs, Robert Cooper, um, you know, uh, McClendon. I mean, those guys are all on that defense, offensive, defensive front. So there's a lot of uh, competitiveness that's uh, that's showing up. Um, you know, I, I mean, I could go through just about you know a variety of guys at each position. But uh, you know, when you have it, when you have that attitude, and you're, and you're working to bring that every day in the trenches, then you got you got a chance to uh, to really uh, you know, take a take a great step. And you know, when you see that your tight ends and linebacker, you Cam McDonald is a guy that you know been really really good. I mean, I'm so impressed with the steps he's taken. So. Um, you know, it's, it's been a good spring. Could be Eugene Williams. Coach, we didn't get to go through the uh, spring experience with you last year, and I'm, I'm kind of curious on this break that you're doing. Is this typical of, you know, what you've done in the past for spring practices? And is there is this just to kind of regroup, spend some time to evaluate, and then go back at it fresh? Or what, what's kind of the reasoning behind having this break kind of two-thirds of the way through? Well, you know, I mean, you know, for us, it's – you know, we group, we group the, the entire spring. We have a winter program, which we want to maximize that with Coach Storms and, and those guys in the weight room to, to help develop their bodies. And so we went through the full uh, you know, winter conditioning program. Um, you know, this year is unique just for Florida State and not having a spring break. And so uh, with that, you know, usually we would have had, you know, a couple of practices uh, that would have led up to that Um and then, you know, had a little bit of a break there at the beginning. So uh, this is a kind of a half and half, you know, and, and, and you know, the first week we got three practices then gave them the weekend, uh, just have a little bit of, you know, basically a four day weekend between practices. And then, uh, um, you know, being able to do that here, I think is, is really good timing. So uh, it wasn't something that is normal, but, you know, we tried to adapt and adjust to make it to where it could be best for our guys. And, and it's, you're just kind of structured the practices, you know, even with today and just the, uh, uh, the competitive, you know, situations and, and physical situations they were put in. And we knew that they were have a couple of days to kind of regroup and, uh, you know, refresh because we could have an unbelievable last week, um, you know, here at spring, uh, spring practice. Hey, Mike, I think you talked uh, Sunday or Saturday after the scrimmage about you had some young receivers that day who looked like young receivers. I guess, how have you seen those guys respond from that the last two? And I guess overall, consistency over stringing plays that stick us together, how, where are they now compared to maybe where they were at the start of spring? I mean, I, I think those guys are, are getting better every day. And, uh, you know, their response has been um, really good. I mean, Lake McLean today had a, an 80-yard touchdown in a, in a – tight coverage situation that was just impressive to see. And you know, he had a, a couple of good plays there, uh, you know, Monday had some bad plays. And you know, to see in that, that response, even throughout the course of a practice on Monday, and then, you know, him, Josh, uh, you know, a lot of the you know, freshman receivers like Kentron, Brian Robinson, uh, you know, is starting to really, you know, come along and playing with more confidence. You know, Darren Williams and Ja'Kai Douglas, I think Ja'Kai is going to get a, a great, great future. Uh, just seeing some of the things that he's been doing out at the receiver position, you know, that couple with the, with the couple of veterans that are, that are showing up uh, and just, you know, really providing great leadership for the group. I mean, it's, um, you know, we're getting better there. And uh, we know there's going to be a, more competition that's going to be added to the room, but uh, I think the future is bright. Yeah, Mike, staying with the receivers, you know, is the message to them, if you have one, like, look, y'all have to step up. We have a bunch of young guys, at least a few of you guys have to play. And are they taking that mindset maybe from the start of spring practice to now? Have you seen a transformation where they realize they got to step up and make plays? Oh, yeah, there's no, there's no secret about it. And, uh, you know, some of these guys came, um, you look at Malik and you look at Josh, I mean, you know, they weren't promised anything other than a great opportunity and they found a great opportunity and uh, you know what they do with it is how they approach the work how they approach the meeting room uh, you know the way that they that they train in all aspects and you know that their maturity has been what's impressive to me and uh, you know I think that 
that with the guys that you know were here last year that got got experience um, in however whatever that volume was. I mean, they they know they know what's what opportunities here, and they know what we need from that position. Uh, you know, for us to play in the way that I believe we're capable of playing. So uh, you know, they're excited about it, and you know, they it is it's been a joy to watch that group kind of you know just come together and just the mindset, you know, coach Dugans is doing a, a really good job, you know, fast tracking these guys. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been fun you know, seeing their growth. It sounds like Derek McLennan's name kind of keeps coming up for the last maybe week or so. Has he taken strides into kind of taking that next, that next step? He has. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, um, you know, with Leonard being out, you know, it's really provided an opportunity for, for him to, uh, you know, seize the moment, and you know he's a he's a young guy that you know, has great passion. Um, you know, I think you know, Derek is really growing from you know being able to see the example of you know a guy like Tremaine, and you know you see the the, the elevation in, in Fabian and what he's doing. Cooper, you know, just the uh, you know even the changes that he's had. I mean, these guys, you know, they know what's necessary. I mean, Dennis Briggs, I, all those guys I all mentioned earlier. I mean. That is a great example for a young guy like Derek, and to 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 see his response to that and understanding the role that uh, um, that he has to establish and has to have for this team. I mean, he's working really hard at it, and so I've seen some some improvement. He has a lot of want to. It's just that that consistency, play in, play out, that uh, you know, he's got to got to continue to show. All right, we're going to go three more. Next will be Coach, you know Jordan. I guess wasn't really able to practice a lot last year for you uh, just being able to see him like three weeks in a row practice how how sort of beneficial has that been for you and Kenny uh, so that you can kind of maybe start tailoring some stuff around him and just you know see him be out there consistently performing no it's been huge and I mean that's a great point that you had because it is you know it was so unique last year I mean you go went through fall camp and I don't think he practiced until the actual Georgia Tech week of practice and then you know from that point on it was hit and miss to you know, really, you know, how much time we got with him, um, you know, different ailments or things that were going on with his body. And it was, uh, it was a challenge. And, you know, Jordan is a phenomenal young man. He's a, he's a, he's a tough minded uh, young man. He loves to compete. Um, it was just you know, kind of a, an unfortunate season of how it all played out, but you see the physical development that he has. I think he's 206, 207 pounds now, still gaining weight through, uh, uh, through, through spring ball and you're know, running faster than he's ever running. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see that. And then like we talked about on Monday, just consistency with his feet, the, the, the confidence that he has in the rhythm and the timing of what we ask him to do in the, in the passing game and his accuracy is, is just, you know, uh, increased to, 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 to a next level um, in how he's playing. And, you know, it's, he's starting to understand what he's doing when it's not right. And that's where you see a guy that can start, you know, kind of coaching himself and, and, and have confidence in the feeling of what it needs to look like. Um, you know, that's where you see some accelerated growth. And I think that's where he's at. Uh, you're not, I know, able to talk specifics. The, uh, the upcoming recruiting class is off to a pretty solid start. And I know you've been able to get guys in. You're not able to still have that contact still in the dead period, but you're able to, they can come watch scrimmages. They can come visit campus. Hope I know a decent amount are playing on coming to the spring game. I guess how important is them being able to actually see y'all in that setting? And I guess are you just counting down the days until the dead period? I think about two months from now, hopefully lifts. You know, we're, we're definitely excited to you know when recruiting opens back up and we're allowed to, to have contact with uh, with the young man on campus. And um, you know, we're we're excited for for that opportunity. And you know, we've we've opened up uh, you know a couple practices and you know have had a had an opportunity to, to let fans come in and watch, you know, you know watch scrimmages and you know, I say spring game is going to be a great event and, you know, and um, you like to encourage everyone to come out and uh, you'll be able to see our team and uh, to be able to celebrate uh, you know, you know, where we are and, and where we're going uh, there together. And uh, we're excited about, uh, um, you know, anybody that can come and be a part of that, uh, that event because it's going to be a, a, a great time. It's going to be a, a really good showcase for where we are right now. Um, and, uh, you know, I know you guys are excited about it. Last one, we'll end with Corey. Told you, man. I'm doing the IRA. You got you three questions. A lot of, let me just tell you, I mean, Derek's giving you a lot of questions, eh, because you said that you're IRA today. I, I mean, <laughs> exactly. Like, you, know, you need to jump on next week and see if you get the same number of questions. Uh, it won't today. happen. It um, won't happen. I might get one in. I wanted to ask you, Mike, about um, Washington announced today they're going to open up their practices and let the media watch. And I know this is something you talked about a year ago, but – 
the fact that you let us watch scrimmages and let fans come if they want at least one of them watch practices what why do you do that why do you think that helps the program um and maybe more why don't other teams do it you know uh, i mean i've always had a very open approach with media just because you know i understand um I understand who we are. I understand what we're about. And, uh, you know, I get to coach some incredible young men and, you know, for their story to be told for the, you know, the best uh, kind of illustration of what they go through and, and how we, how we do what we do. I, mean, I believe in the development of it. And um, I've always had that, that mindset. And, uh, you know, I think that, um, you know, the job, the, the job that the media does help in, to, to tell our story is, is something that can be a great benefit uh, for us in regards to, to recruiting and, you know, Guys come here. You know, we want to we want to help help them. Um, you know, build their brand and build their identity and, and help uh, you, you share that message. But um, you know, I, I've I've just always I've always thought that's been a critical piece to to telling the story because these guys they they work extremely hard and uh, you know, the, our coaches do it. I mean, they they put in so much time and you know I think it's it's a great opportunity. Like, you know, we're very open with our coaches, assistant coaches, and all in, in all aspects because um, you know one day you know there's there's quite a few coaches on my staff that I think will be head coaches and, you know, to help prepare them uh, for that, for that moment to, to be able to, you know, you build those relationships with the media and tell, you know, to help you know, celebrate you know, their stories and, and who they are. So that, you know, if it, if a recruit does happen to watch, um, you know, they get a sense of who it is that they're going to be able to play for. And, uh, you know, I just think it's a, um, it's a remarkable opportunity for everybody, everybody involved, you know, um, the, the scrimmages, there's times that I've opened scrimmages and times that I've closed scrimmages. Um, you know, I like the fact that people got to come watch, watch us practice. And so we, we open that up. You hear these, these last couple and, you know, it's, uh, I think it's been really good. All right. Thank you. Thank you.